I want to thank you for allowing me into your homes with, with these moments of reflection and I hope encouragement. It's been a real privilege to be allowed to, to share these thoughts with you. So where do I go from here? One possibility is to bring this to a conclusion. I've spoken about a journey from panic to peace, and maybe that's all that needs to be done. But I'm not satisfied that it is, and that it's yet time to close this book. These devotionals will remain on YouTube for, for some time, so you can go back and watch them again. You can forward a link to your, uh, the people that you think would benefit from them. Since I'm working from a manuscript, I can send it out to you electronically. If you'd like to study what I've said a little more closely, and maybe even talk about it with your friends. Not in person, of course, but, but maybe with FaceTime or Zoom. Maybe you want to send me a note to continue our conversation. In any event, I felt that I should continue. My next devotional series will be about heaven. I'll be borrowing heavily from, heavily from Scott McKnight and his book, The Heaven Promise. I'll give you a little more complete explanation of my thinking when I begin the series that I'm going to call Heaven is a Wonderful Place. I have one more installment before I bring this series to a close, and I'm going, to, going back to alliteration, and I've called it Curb Your Fears. I've learned in my over 70 years of life that we react either out of fear or love. And the two seem to be mutually exclusive. In fact, John wrote in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The more we react out of love, the less we are controlled by fear. There's another verse I want to introduce. It's from Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is in the imperative voice. It's a command. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged. The implication is that we can control our emotions. Allow me to clarify just a moment. Courage is not being without fear. Rather, it's realistically looking at what is causing us fear and then choosing to react out of love. Allow me to illustrate with a story from my own life. In March of 2003, Iona and I flew to Taiwan to visit our son and daughter-in-law, Jeff and Becky, and their brand new daughter, our first grandchild, Chandan Jaya. She'd been born in January and was just two months old when we arrived. What a gorgeous baby she was. I enjoyed spending time with her and with her parents. Jeff took me on a number of short hikes. One day we climbed up Monkey Mountain. On the way down, I slipped and, and broke my, my left ankle in three places. Went to a local hospital. I had x-rays and a cast was placed on my leg. The doctor told me I'd need surgery and that I could have it done in Taiwan or I could go back to Canada. I chose the latter. Our first day back in Saskatoon, we went to the Royal University Hospital to consult with an orthopedic surgeon. He agreed that surgery was necessary and it would be scheduled for the very next morning at City Hospital. When we arrived at City Hospital, we were told that I'd been bumped because of an emergency surgery that had to be done on another patient. I want to pause here just to remind us of what was going on in the world at that time. Another scare was coming out of Asia. Do you remember SARS? Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome? When we left Narita Airport in Tokyo, we were all given small yellow cards telling us that if we developed certain symptoms in the next few days after our return, we should report immediately to medical authorities. What were the symptoms? Fever, a cough. The next morning, we returned to City Hospital for surgery and wouldn't you know it, I had a fever and I developed a cough. Iona sheepishly took the yellow card to the nurses at the front desk of the emergency room. I was immediately placed into isolation and everyone who came around me was masked and gowned. I was taken by ambulance to the Royal University Hospital. 
to wait to discover if I did have SARS. As the shadow of SARS spread itself over me, I began to ask myself some questions. What if I did have SARS? I was only 56. My father had died at 57 and I'd, I'd really hoped I might be allowed to live longer than he had. So I asked myself the most important question I've ever asked. Was I ready to die? The answer to that question, well, the, the answer to the question that uh, did I want to die was no, I didn't want to die. I, I wanted to live long enough to see Chandon grow up. I wanted to live long enough to see more grandchildren. But how could I answer the question of whether or not I was ready to die? So I asked myself a series of questions. And here they are. Did I believe myself to be a sinner? Yes. Did I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity? Yes. Did I believe he came to earth and, and lived a perfectly sinless life? Yes. Did I believe that he died on a cross to pay the penalty for sin? Yes, I did. Did I believe that the forgiveness that flowed from the cross could be extended to include even me? Yes. Had I confessed my sins? Had I repented of them? Yes. Had I accepted the salvation that Jesus has offered? Yes. And because of that, I could face whatever the future held for me, even if it meant death. Well, nothing has changed. I'm still ready to die, even though I, I don't want to. I now have seven grandchildren and Chandon is 17 years old and will be going into grade 12 next year. I'd like to live long enough to hold my great grandchildren, but if that isn't what God has for me, I'll accept what he gives. I will continue to react out of love rather than fear. I like to go for walks. When I meet people coming toward me, I, I step off the sidewalk to give these people a wide berth. Is it because I'm afraid that they might infect me? No, it isn't. I want them to feel safe when they walk by me. Love, fear, which one will you choose to react out of? One last comment before I draw this series to a close. The Church of Jesus Christ will not be defeated by this virus. No churches are currently meeting. We've just been through Easter weekend and this is the time when most people make their way to a church, but, but all those church doors were closed. How will the church survive? Will it survive? I'm reminded of what Jesus said to Peter after hearing him confess that he believed that Jesus was the promised Messiah. Listen to these words from Matthew 16, 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Neither the gates of hell nor the coronavirus will defeat the church. And remember that the church isn't a building. It isn't a denomination. It's the body of Jesus Christ. It's you and it's me and all that name the name of Jesus. I want to pray right now and to thank Jesus for his marvelous victory, this marvelous victory that he's won for us. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for your church, your church that cannot be defeated by the gates of hell, your church that cannot be defeated by the coronavirus or anything else in all of creation. We thank you for the power of your church. We thank you for every uh, local manifestation of your church right across the city, across our province and around the world where, where people are gathering to celebrate your life and your death and your resurrection and remembering what it means for us. Help us to be a lighthouse, a place of safety where people can come in the midst of a, a time of pain and sorrow and darkness and may we show them by the way we live, what Jesus is really like. For we ask this in your name, amen.